This is part two of my big movie review of one of the most terrifying love stories of all time. <laughs> and yet one of the most accurate that explains why uh, women don't want to marry men anymore. Especially insecure men because they ruin our lives and literally unalive us. So many of us thought we were getting like this part two and instead we got a horror movie. Where we left off before is that Leo, I'm just going to call him by their like name names. Leo decides he's a coward. He doesn't want to go to Paris. He never wanted to. But now he has an excuse to hide behind, which is this new job. Or sorry, promotion. And we find out that she's pregnant. And now he has an even better excuse to not go. And something to hide behind. Baby trapping her. Again. Because he's already bait. That's why she's living in this house to begin with. In this like boring town and uh Connecticut is because he baby trapped her like so many men do but because it's the 50s and abortion isn't legal and women can't make um they can't they can't have bank accounts where they can have money and they can't buy their own home and all that stuff like and getting divorced is probably very hard especially if you don't have money this woman is screwed and this is where we're heading. And this is why men want these trad wives. Because they want you to be dependent on them financially. And then they want to put a bunch of babies in you. So then you literally can't leave. And then now they want to ban abortion. So you can't ever center your own life. Because you'll go to prison if you have an abortion. He's like, well, we don't have to let this stop us. You know, because it's not that abortion wasn't happening. It was just like not very safe. Which is literally why we women fought to legalize it we, they got tired of dying but a woman's gonna do what she's gonna do at the end of the day and she's like you know we we can we have options still as long as we take care of it before 12 weeks it's fine you know we've got it we've got to be together in this okay please tell me you're still on my team and he's like mm. <laughs> maybe now's not the best time to tell her i'm forking the secretary again and so this is where he starts lying like so many men do well we'll figure it out okay just shut up just please be quiet and just believe me. We'll figure it out. In other words, I'm going to make you have this baby if my life depends on it. He's like, you know, you're only 10 weeks. So 12 weeks, cool. We got two weeks for you to think that I give a crap. He's like, okay, okay, okay. I love you. And this is him plotting and scheming and hating her. How dare her think that she's going to abort his baby. So then they have this scene where they're all at the beach with the couple right the ones the, like the wandavision people this is so classic of a cowardly man who will not actually tell his wife what's happening but does it in a very um public em environment so she can't be crazy right men do this the, uh, grace and frankie opening scene where they find out that they're you know their husbands are leaving them because they're gay and they're going to marry each other jane fonda's character said that's why you brought us here so we wouldn't make a scene that's why we're at this restaurant y'all didn't have the balls to tell us in in private that's what this is about y'all men will drop huge bombs in public so you look like a hysterical crazy woman if you have the authentic rageful and reaction that you should have so he's all like yeah you know now they want to give me money and she's like oh wait hold on a second why is he talking about it this way and then he's she's like oh my god it's over this is the moment she knows that she married a coward and this has all been a lie this is honestly the most devastating moment in this movie besides the ending of course she's like let's go look at the wall she's like i thought you turned the job down right um because women don't think that men are just gonna lie to their face by saying nothing it's like not yet calm down you drama queen i just got i'm just keeping my options open but she knows the truth he's like look i'm gonna make a lot of money things are gonna be different here because we have money now the point is we can be happy here like we like bleh. like he's like literally just being like we're not doing it i'm just gonna talk some bs we're interesting people we can be interesting here She's like, no, no, no. She calls him out. And he's like, no, no. Like I said, it's just an option. God. Liar, liar, liar. Pants on fire. She's like, oh. okay, so let's suppose you have all this money. Wouldn't you still be wasting your life toiling away at a job you find ridiculous? I love her. She's like, let that be my business if I ruin my life. Look at her. Your business, bro? I am my wagon is hitched to yours mother how 
how how is it your business that you literally ruined the dream we've been talking about? They get home, she's packing books because this woman is, like I said, murder gets stuff done. We get stuff done. This woman is literally packing boxes at the moment, trying to still believe that she has a chance, but she knows she does. She's like, you don't even want to go, do you? No, come on, I want to go. No, you don't, because you've never tried it anything. Oh. And if you don't try it anything, you can't fail. This right here is what women, like I would, I would argue most women could accuse men of. He's like, what are you talking about? I don't try. I support you, don't I? I pay for this house that I made you move to because a baby trapped you. I work 10 hours a day at a job I can't stand. And instead of actually doing anything about it, I'm going to hate you and blame you for it. And she's like, you don't have to. And he's like, that's it. Look, I'm not happy about this hard decision that I'm making that you don't want me to make. But I have the backbone to not run away from my responsibility. I love this. It takes a backbone to lead the life you want. Frank. So then he gaslights her some more, and then he goes upstairs to the bathroom, and he finds this. The abortion thing. What the hell are you going to do with that? You going to stop me? You're doing right now. Go ahead and try. I love it when she gets in his face like this. This is where this man gets violent. This man is abusive. Even if he never touches her, he is threatening violence all over this scene. Listen to me, April. You do this. You do this, and I swear to God. Oh, you what? You leave me? Is that a threat or a promise? Brah. Okay, then she like regroups because she's like, okay, this isn't going to work. <laughs> How do I manipulate this man into not ruining my life? She's like, okay, okay, okay. You're being dramatic. As long as we do this, because this is, this is what's sad. She's like, as long as it's done in the first 12 weeks, it's perfectly safe. Her thinking that he's worried about her doing it because she might die. And she learns like, no, he doesn't care about that. <laughs> and he's like, that's now. Don't I get a say in this? No, bro, you don't actually. No, you think you do, but you really don't. She's like, of course you do. She does what women do so well. It would be for you. <laughs> We're so good at convincing men things, but like, honey, it's not going to work this time because this man is not going anywhere because he's a coward. Like, look, it's like we talked about what you said went before you, I realized you're lying. This is for you. Have the abortion. We can do this thing. How can it be for me when the thought of it and I cut it off, but it was something ridiculous. Disgust me or something like that. She's like, okay, fine. It's for me. <laughs> it's for me, bro. She's like, okay, look, just tell me we can have the... I won't abort the baby if you can tell me that we're going to have the baby in bear. Okay? All right? You can baby trap me, but don't baby trap me in this boring town. I'm an actress who lived in New York, not Connecticut. Just tell me we can have it in a different place. She doesn't even care if it's Paris. Just please don't make me stay here, please. Like, no, can't have the baby in bear. You're having this baby. Like it or not. She's like, why... What? Like, look, I don't need everything here. I don't need this house. I don't need the cars. I don't need all this nice. Please, just like, get me out of here. Who made these rules? Exactly. She says this. Look, the only reason we moved out here was because I got pregnant. I eat your baby trap me. Then we had another child to prove the first one wasn't a mistake. <sighs> Baller. And how long does it go on? How many more do I have to have? Then she does this, and this is so good. Do you actually want another child? Do you? You're all about the truth, Frank. You just think you're all about the truth. The thing about truth is that everybody knows what it is, however long they've lived without it. No one forgets the truth. They just get better at lying. So basically, she's like, bro, you can lie to yourself all you want. We both know the truth, that you're a coward, and you're hiding behind me, and you're not as brave as me, and you hate me for it. Because that's really what this movie's about. Again, do you actually want another child? And the subtext is, are you doing this because to punish me because you hate me? Like, I don't know. It's how I feel. I hate him so much for this. Look at this. Only a man has done this to you. Because this is what men do. Anyone else in their right mind would feel the same way, April. Like, look, I've had two kids. Doesn't that count? The like, God, you're crazy. You're heartless words. Because you even said, make it seem as if having children is a punishment. It is. When you have them because you trap them. This is also coming from a man who literally never sees his children. Yeah, okay. Um, shut up, Frank. And then she has to do what so many mothers have to do when they dare to admit that parenting or mothering especially is hard. I love my children. This is where these men, they know the mom guilt. They know that society judges women who dare to want anything other than being mom or having freedom outside the home when they're mom. And he's like, are you sure about that? You psycho? What do you mean? April, you just said our daughter was a mistake. How do I know you didn't try to get rid of her, you little serial cat? Michael, how do I know you didn't try to 
flush the whole family down the toilet. God, I hate this man. Now, of course, she's like, I did not do that. I didn't try to abort the, our two kids. He's like, really? But how do I know? Like, look at this man. He's like psycho. If a man ever talks to you like this, run. This is a man who literally wants to unalive you. The only reason he's not probably is because of the law. And she's like, oh my God, please just stop. Shut up. And he's like, no. April, a normal woman, a normal sane mother, doesn't buy a piece of rubber tubing to give herself an abortion. Ha, yeah, right, bro. Uh, like, so many women do this, even before it's legal. Literally risk dying than having your baby gravy turn into another loser that they have to raise. It's like, most normal women wouldn't give this an abortion so they can live some kind of fantasy. Again, this reminds me so much of Matt Damon in Good Will Hunting, who literally... Um, yeah, that man was, is, if those, if those two ended up together, he would have killed Skylar. You can't convince me anything else. And I was like, oh my God, I hope they're together. Go back and watch that movie. He has the same face, but scarier. Look, all I'm saying is you're not being rational. You know how men love to call us crazy and like literally locked us up to that crap? This is him using that. I mean, it's almost as if he, he does, he, he might as well say, remember Michael Shannon? Sorry, I don't remember his name. And his 37 electroshock treatments maybe we should have you go talk to a psychologist maybe i should just put you in insane asylum hmm? like that's what he's threatening here that's what he's threatening that's why they had that scene where they talk about this man who's getting electro shock treatment treatment that's in his so condescending he's like i think it's time we found somebody to help make sense of your life so i don't have to lock you up forever because that's actually what a lot of men used to do they would literally get women locked up so they could go and like cheat and remarry and do all kinds of stuff seriously these men are these men are so evil and then she's like oh is the new job gonna pay for that <laughs> i love even when she's so defeated she's like Mah! she's got that fighting spirit in her and he's like yeah april if you need a shrink i will pay for it this is where she finally is like okay <sighs> so it's a childish idea huh and he's like yeah it's over but, you know, we can be happy. I can make you happy. We've had a great couple of months because I tricked you for a couple months into thinking I'm not the coward that actually I've always been. <laughs> but, man, this woman knows her life is over now. At work the next day, his co-workers are like, that was kind of a silly plan, don't you think? But, you know, all the secretaries, look at this, they'll be celebrating in the secretarial pool. So, that makes me think that this dude is just like forking all the secretary. And look at him. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go back to cheating. That's really what I am, a coward who cheats. So then he, he, this man thinks that he can just go back to having the normal life they had as if nothing happened. Didn't just threaten to put her up in an insane asylum. Didn't just tell her that he's gonna baby trap her. Uh, none of that. She's like, you wanna dance, honey? She's like, I don't think so. And she's, and then the WandaVision's like, I will. So him and, her and Leo dance. And then she gets sick. Leo drives her home. And this man's like, yes, go chats with her he's like give me the sorry you're not gonna man this woman is a mess now that leo's not there she's like trying not to fake anything at all she's like like i know i'm born with you but you know they like paris isn't that great i've been there it's like it wasn't about paris brah he's like so you just wanted out i wanted in mm, i love that line i just wanted us to live again and by that she means before he baby trapped her for years i thought we shared this secret that we would be wonderful in the world. I didn't know how, but just, just the possibility of us being a team together and us being on the same page and this man deserving me and my ambition and my, my free spirit. You know, I thought maybe that, that gave her hope. And now this woman is hopeless because this man has shown her that he is literally a liar and was never the man she was hoping he was because he ruined the one chance to get out. She was like, to put all your hopes and promise in a promise that was never made. Ugh. She's starting to realize that this dude, like, never even promised her this. He's just a shit talker. She's like, you see, Frank knows what he wants. He's found his place being a mediocre white man who's boring and entitled and forks a soccer card. He's just fine. Married, two kids, all the social capital and privilege in the world. He doesn't need anything. He's fine being dead inside and hating me. And it should be enough for me to be attached to this loser. But, I mean, it is for him. But we were never special or destined or anything at all. It was all crap. 
I saw a whole other future. I can't stop seeing it. Yeah, because this man tended to be someone different. And this is what so many men do. They're like, oh my God, yeah, like I'm going to be there. La la la. And the women like pump them up and we're their cheerleader and we believe in them. And at the end of the day, they're cowards. It's like, I can't leave but I can't stay. I mean, literally, if this man doesn't understand that she is schmoozicidal, like, such an idiot. Of course he does, and he's like, well, we're done. So they dance, and they end up forking, and he's like, let me take you somewhere. She's like, no, let's just do it here. Like, I just want to bone you, dude. I just want to cheat on my husband. I want to feel alive. I'm like, just, I don't, I don't, it's not about you, bro. <laughs> I just feel, like, hopeless, and I hate my husband, so... Revenge, I guess. After they have like the fastest, dumbest schmegs ever, it was all had nothing to do with her pleasure, of course. And by the way, there was a scene where his hand was on the thing, and I was like, God, they keep making Titanic callbacks. Like, how she's she's forking a dude in a car again, but it's a very different kind of experience. He's like, This is what I've always wanted. Yeah, we know, bro. You hate your wife. Ugh, I love you. And she's like, oh. and he's like, No, 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 I mean it. I love you. And she's like, please, just be quiet. <laughs> uh, and then just take me home. Like, she is so tired of men. This man doesn't love her. He doesn't even know her. She's like, God, I wish men would just stop lying. So the next morning, he's like, okay, it's been 12 weeks. Cool, you're going to keep the baby. But I understand why you might be upset. He's like, you mean why I'm not sleeping with you? <laughs> Basically, she's like, I just don't want to talk, bro. Just leave me alone. And he's like, what do you want to talk about then? She's like, would you just, like, she said it is nice. Would you be all right if we didn't talk about anything? So now we're right back to that car scene where he's like, let's talk. She was like, just please do I, can we just not talk? And the reason is because she knows he's not going to listen anyway and that he's just full of crap and he's just a blah, 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 blah. She's like, I just don't feel like we have to talk about everything all the time. Just shut up. And again, men think we talk a lot. Okay. But I think we should just be helping each other in this period of time, okay? I mean, God, this is what this is what kills me all. I mean, God knows my own behavior has been pretty weird lately. He was literally just setting himself up for this, okay? Just, just pitched himself this thing right here so he could do this to her. As a matter of fact, there's something I'd like to tell you. I've been with a girl a few times in the city. A girl I hardly know. Like he's still lying even when like telling the truth. It was nothing to me, but it's over now really over and if i weren't sure of that i guess i never would have told you about it <laughs> i just gotta explain what happened right there in case you didn't see first of all um he neglected again it men just lie he neglected to say this is his secretary he says he didn't know her he's also using this as a threat she didn't sleep with him the night before and he's like well i just want you to know that i've actually been having an affair and I'm only telling you about that because I'm not going to have an affair anymore and continue to cheat on you and put your life at risk for STIs and all kinds of things because you know he ain't using protection, y'all. Sure, he's not even pulling out because that's how entitled and reckless he is. He's basically saying, hanging this over her head, being like, just in case you didn't know, it's easy for me to cheat on you. So go ahead and just not sleep with me. But now you know what will happen if you don't. This is coercion, by the way. So he, 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 she was like, so why did you tell me, bro? He's like, I don't know. I think it's a simple case of wanting to be a man again. <laughs> like everything you do is about that, bro. Again, he's using that language of like, you haven't told me I'm a big boy, a big man lately. So yeah, I went to her. After all the abortion business, uh, ah, again, he's lying. He was cheating on her before any of that happened. I don't know, it's some kind of like neurotic, irrational need to prove something. She's like, no, 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 no. I don't care about that. I mean, why did you care about why you had the girl? He's like, what? I mean, what's the point? Is it supposed to make me jealous or something? <laughs> I love her. Is it supposed to make me fall in love with you? Or back into bed with you? Or what? Oh, she just reads them right here. I mean, what would you like me to say, Frank? Since we're back to me reading a script for your ego, what would you like me to say? Well, I don't know, like maybe how you feel. I don't feel anything. Oh, I love her. Drives him crazy that she doesn't care. Uh, what, what, yeah. In other words, you don't care what I do or who I fork or anything? She's like, no. <laughs> like, she is so scary in this scene because she's just being so for real. Or, you know, she's like, no, I guess that's right. I don't. Fork who you like. You can't threaten me with affairs. Bro, don't you understand? I want you to care. Oh, I know you do. I know. 
I suppose I would if I loved you. But I don't think I do anymore. I just figured that out. You love me! Oh, you think so? <laughs> I love her so much. So right when they're in the middle of this fight, by the way, costume change, sorry, I have to take breaks here. It's interrupted by the perfect little neighbor. These people. It's midnight here, by the way. He's not dead. I, I promise y'all, I'm always shooting a really weird time. So um, pretty sure the only worst people you could have in their home right now during the middle of this very violent argument is Smiley Pants here. And the truth teller. The truth teller of the whole movie, which is why they originally loved him. Because he was like, oh, you guys love truth. Hey, Winslet loves truth. Or sorry, April. But Frank, Frank doesn't like truth. He's a poser in every way possible, even a truth-seeking po poser. So of course, he's like, hey, what happened? Why aren't you leaving? Cold feet. And he goes right for Frank. He's basically making fun of him, being like, no, oh, you decide you're better off here. You don't think you're better than everybody, huh? He's more comfortable. I love how, how he's right in his ear. Look at, like, like Frank. Leo's getting so pissed here. Sorry, I'm going back and forth between Leo, Frank, Leo, Frank, back. And he quotes Frank, here in the old hopeless emptiness, after all. Huh? <laughs> and look at his face. It's like, oh, ooh. You know, there's that saying. There's a lot of sayings about truth. Truth will set you free, but first it'll ruin your day. This is his it ruining his day. But it's not going to set him free because he's like, no, I want to live a lie of being a coward, but pretending like I'm special. There's also that saying, I'm not sure if this is Southern or not, but I've heard it a lot in the South. A hit dog hollers. If your English is not your first language, holler is like yell. Uh, my grandma said, holler, stop hollering all the time. Um, this is the face of a hit dog who's about to holler. Oh, he is like... He is sweating rage right now because this man who's like been treated for, you know, is on the verge of getting a lobotomy at this point because he, because the institution of mental health is such a crazy place where they hate truth tellers. This is like before even one flew over was the cuckoo's nest, right? My dad was in a mental institution back in the 70s. Does not sound like a fun place to be for anyone. I've been using mental hospitals to literally uh, lock up marginalized people and people who are just a little too honest for a long time. He's even like, oh, look at the rage on your face. I know it's true now. This isn't Jack from the Titanic anymore, is it? And he basically says everything out loud that's happening. I wouldn't be surprised if he knocked her up on purpose. Bingo! <laughs> just so he could spend the rest of his life Hiding behind a maternity dress. Oh! That right there. That's what Frank's doing. Hiding behind the woman he keeps baby trapping. So that no one will realize he's a complete coward. That way you'd never have to find out what you're really made of. This is when Frank loses it. Now you look at her, you're just not blah 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 blah. Who do you think you are? I'm the king of this castle. Come in here and you say whatever crazy things that come into your stupid head. Needs a few more electroshock treatments. Along with April here, send her and get her some. Actually, Frank would probably love for her to be lobotomized so that she won't stop talking back to him. In fact, that is probably what would have happened to her if she didn't choose her path in the end. And then he's basically like, shut your mouth. And look, his mom's like, well, he's not well, Frank. He's not well. No, oh, he's well. It's Frank who's not well. <laughs> like, I love that Frank gets exposed to the neighbors for being psychotic and not psychotic, just a king baby, just a selfish prick like so many men, especially back then when they had even more power. I don't give a damn if he's sick or well or dead or alive. He's a psycho. Shut your mouth. And keep your opinions to yourself. Look at his face. Look at his face. <laughs> Go back to the insane asylum where you belong, you crazy egg. Like, for real? Who's crazy, brah? I love April. She's just like, keeps smoking her cigarette, cigarette while pregnant. She's probably drinking some scotch, too. I don't know. Then Frank is out having his little, you know, time out in the living room. And the truth teller is all like, big man you got there, April. <laughs> This dude is taunting. Mm, 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 
Mm, I love it. But I feel sorry for you. And again, maybe you deserve each other. That's not fair. This is the first time I'm like, shut your mouth. They don't deserve each other. She does not deserve this. It's not her fault he keeps baby trapping her and is just a psychopath and abusive husband. Sorry, brah. She can't leave him. Unless she literally dies. And then he does this. I mean, the way you look right now, I'm beginning to feel sorry for him too. Shut up. Now you're being a misogynist. You must give him a pretty bad time. If making babies is the only way he can prove he's got a pair of balls. <laughs> Y'all, Anthony gave me a whole box of instruments. So, sorry. I hope you like this because this makes it so much more fun for me. <laughs> but he knew exactly what that would do. Now, now Frank's like, yes, listen here, mister. And he goes to punch him in the face. Notice, shocker, shocker to anyone who's been following me for a while. Notice who breaks up the fight. Mama, the sweet little delicate flower, Mama, who smiles all the time and swallows her rage. Oh, well, this worthless piece of crap doesn't do anything. Hmm, hmm. Uh, he doesn't even do that. He's just like, hmm, go ahead and kick my son's butt. I'll let the woman um, defend him the way I let her do literally everything and then I hate her guts. Meanwhile, April's all just like, <laughs> she's so checked out. She's so done. So then he's about to leave. And of course, you know, neighbor lady's like, hey, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. She's really not sorry. She's just embarrassed. She's embarrassed that her son is too honest and that his honesty exposed them and their problem. You know, uh, like I talked about in the last video, part of like whiteness in the United States, and I don't mean like white people, I'm saying whiteness that you're indoctrinated into in the United States. Part of that is no conflict. Image management, no real conflict, like healthy conflict. It's all like passive aggressive conflict. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Or at least that is what it's like in the South. And then he makes fun of that. He's like, all right, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I love, he gives his mom a lot of crap, but he never gives his dad a lot of crap, which is why I don't like you. I like a lot, but you are so misogynistic. You can criticize literally everything but your own uh, white male privilege. Because then he's like shaking his mom or he's like, Ma, I have to say I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why don't you shake your dad, slap him across the face and be like, bruh. Are you dead? And then he has one final line, which basically is the, the nail in the coffin for her. You know, I'm glad about one thing. You wanna know what I'm glad about? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not that kid in your belly that your husband forced into it. And this is when she's like, that's true. <laughs> like she already knows that, but hearing that from him, that was hard to hear. And Frank starts running his mouth because he never shuts up. We talked about this in part one. That this man, you know, like like so many men are like this. They just never shut up. They call us talkers and they just want to talk and talk. Like the whole opening scene of this movie, the, like the first 10 minutes was them in a car. And she's like, just please stop talking. Here he is again. Won't shut the fork up. Don't tell me. Let me guess, April. I made a disgusting spectacle of myself, right? Oh, look who's awake. <laughs> she's like, right. Like... This is her way of being defiant. She's like, yeah, I'm not playing this game anymore. If you say so. Mm -hmm. And everything that man said is true, right? She's like, yeah, well, apparently I don't have to say anything. <laughs> You're saying it for me. Then they get this whole thing. Well, I missed some of it. It's like, blah, blah, blah. Frank just running his mouth. And he accuses her of being unable to love. And this, remember that quote? Oh, I forgot who's, who said this. Someone in the comments, I'm sure, can tell right away. Um... When men are afraid we're going to laugh at them and we're afraid they're going to unalive us. That's what this scene is. She's like, oh my God, you're so ridiculous. <laughs> like, you really think I'm incapable of love? You? You really are a talker, Frank. If black could be made into white by talking, you'd be the man for the job because you never shut up. Now, I'm crazy because I don't love you, right? It's like, no, you're not crazy. You do love me. That's the point. <laughs> but if you are crazy, into the mental ward you go. Lock, key. And then she's like, but I don't, I hate you. <laughs> and the way she's so calm while saying this, you were just some boy who made me laugh at a party once, which is a callback to the original opening scene, the very first scene 
where, yeah, he was like, a loser and she's beautiful and he made her laugh. He had nothing going for her, he made her laugh. And then they danced together. And she's like, yeah, he's hot and he makes me laugh, cool. Little did she know he's gonna ruin her life. Sorry, microphone issue. And now I loathe the sight of you. <laughs> now I remember when I was, I don't know what, I don't know, I was a young adult when I watched this, I think. Maybe not even, I don't know. I remember thinking, God, she's so mean. Now I am like, you go April. He deserves every word of this. In fact, if you come any closer, if you touch me or anything, I think I'll scream. Come on, April, stop this, stop this. Dude called her bluff. Look at this, look at her face. Ah! Now look at this. Like this is terrifying. Fuck This is going to give me nightmares. This is the look of a man who literally, if it wasn't illegal, would kill her right now. Also, reminder, men are never out of control with their anger. This man is very calculated. Watch this. He's so angry. So angry. Oh my God, look at this. Look at my dog. Look. Sorry, y'all. Oh, he's doing me. Like his little toes are moving. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so watch. He's going to chase her through the house, throw chairs across the room, just like Beauty and the Beast. Remember he did that? He threw furniture at Belle, and then the happy ending was that they got married. Do we wonder why this is so normal, right? From when we were little girls, it's like, yeah, the man of your dreams will throw furniture. It's okay. Look what he says. Fuck you and all your hateful stuck up. I love that. He's calling her stuck up because she... He, she knows that she deserves better, and he's like, you stuck up, little girl. And I love it, because she's like, oh, what are you going to do now? You going to hit me? Show me how much you love me? See, now, I think there's a part of her that wants him to hit her. Not unalive her. He's obviously scared. But um, she doesn't want this baby. She doesn't want to be in this marriage. I wouldn't be surprised. She is so hopeless at this point, and <laughs> probably knows that death or running away, or somehow proving that this man sucks is the only way out. I wouldn't be surprised if she really hopes that he will kick her in the stomach at this point. I'm surprised that it doesn't end with her throwing herself down the stairs, because that's actually what a lot of women have done when they are trapped. No woman wants to give birth to a child of rape or coercion. But let's face it, and my mutual Candace Kelly has a whole series on this, most of our grandmothers were graped. Hell, a lot of us are products of grape. A lot of husbands are out there coercing their wives on a regular basis because they don't even, they don't think it's great to threaten women with bad moods and the threat of violence and all this stuff. But back then, uh, a, lo a lot of our grandmas were graped. And a lot of us are products of grape. And then we wonder, and this is what Candace Kelly talks about all the time, and I want to make some videos about this. And then we wonder why our grandmas hate Grandpa, why they're, why they're so bitter, why they are so cold, why they seem like they are just like heartless and, and hardened. My grandma, the one who was held hostage by my grandpa, literally, he wouldn't give her a divorce. And then he celebrated at her funeral and abused her and all kinds of things. She was a very mean woman. I couldn't stand her. She was so mean. She was so mean to us. She was such an angry, bitter old woman. And now I know why. She hated that man. He wouldn't let her leave. And I wouldn't be surprised if all of the children are a product of grape. Just putting it out there. Candace Kelly is writing a book about this right now. She's one of my mutuals. She's a journalist. She's amazing. Follow her. I'm going to tag her in the comments or in the caption. So then he's all like, I couldn't be bothered to hurt you and alive you. <laughs> okay. No, what you're doing here is you're very tactical. You don't want to go to jail. You don't want to leave bruises. So he psychologically destroys her, which again, um, emotional abuse is physical abuse. I would argue, as, some, as someone who experienced both, that emotional abuse is actually worse. It causes so much, I mean, I, this isn't a competition. Just saying. It doesn't leave marks. No one believes you. You don't even think you're being abused. Um, and like, it kills your everything, your whole sense of self. And it takes forever to recover from this. 
So again, this movie is it about an abusive man, not an un- unhappy couple stuck in the suburb. Fork that. And he's like, you're not worth the trouble it would take to hit you. Yeah, sure. And ser- again, if it wasn't illegal and he still didn't need her to do all this labor, he absolutely would have hit her. You're not worth the pet. Like, how many metaphors, Frank? Are you trying to be a poet right now? Like... We get it. You're not worth the powder it would take to blow you up. You're an empty, empty, hollow shell of a woman. Hello, projection. You're the one who's dead inside. Again, look at his face. And then this line right here gets me. What the hell are you even doing if you hate me so much? In my house. Oh, it's your house, huh? This is how men think. I'm the one who makes money. It's all mine. Even though she does endless labor. Endless labor. Men don't think that our labor means anything. It's my house. This is how men still think. And this is also what men want to go back to. Because this was back when women would get really forked if they got divorced. Because it is his. Why the hell are you even married to me? Because I don't have a choice, brah. Your baby trapped me. What the hell are you doing carrying my child? Not our child. And I love caring. It's such a funny term. As if she's just carrying it around. Not literally making it. Making it! I did not realize, like, when my sister was pregnant for the first time, I was like, you're making a human being. you literally making it. It's sucking all the, everything out of your bones. Read the list if you don't know what I'm talking about. They're literally parasites who are literally just suck the life out of mommy and make the, she's making a baby i know that it takes two to make a bit whatever but he's just like caring he's just caring my child my house my rules and then this line is what makes her want to die i mean why didn't you just get rid of it when you had the chance it's not like i talked you out of it because listen to me april listen to me i got news for you girl i wish to god you had this is literally the worst thing this man could have said to her. Because that's what she wanted to do. And now she knows this man hates her. It's only going to get worse. She has no other choice. So then he's all like, raw, raw, raw. Stomps upstairs. Throws some more furniture. Breaks some more stuff. Hers, I'm sure. Not his. And then it's like, <laughs> and then, uh-oh, door slams. Wait, where's she going? April! April, where are you going? He's just like, Stay away from me! Like he's like, I don't understand why she's running. I just said the meanest shit ever. Can I just get away from you in the fucking woods? He's like, no, but I didn't mean when I said she's like, why are you still talking? Is there any way I can get you to stop talking? <laughs> this man tortures her by just uh, blah, 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 blah. So she finally convinces him to just let her think. He's like, okay, but please come back to the house. <laughs> I love you. Even though I told you I wish you had aborted our baby and you're never going out of your trapped. It's my house. But he still won't stop. So she's like, I'm going to scream again. But you know, they're in public now. Okay. So he finally leaves her alone. And then we cut to the next morning. She has changed her. T- she's like, would you like scrambled eggs or fried? <laughs> How many women can relate to giving Oscar worthy performances when we need to do what's best for us or like not die or like, Manipulate a situation so a man doesn't abuse us or whatever. I should win an Oscar all the times with my ex who I was like, mm, I love you. <laughs> I hate you, but I love you. Every woman I know is able to do this. Not diminishing actors, just saying. We can all flip into this because we have no choice. He's like, what's happening? <laughs> I thought you hated me, bro. Because I still hate you. And she's, and she's like, no, I kept you back fast. And she's like, you know, it's an important day. She's turned into like, chippa chippa, housewife. Not difficult anymore. Isn't this your first day back with the da 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 da? She doesn't care about anything. Big deal. And he's like, yeah, it is. Ha <laughs> ha. Thanks, mommy. And she's asking about it. He's like, oh, I didn't tell you about it. Oh, I was too busy forking my circle to her and hating your guts. She's like, why don't you tell me about it now? He draws this, this dumb thing. And she's like, wow. <laughs> How many women have done this for men so much? Wow. It's like we do with children. Wow, Timmy, that was great. And then she plays dumb. I think I understand. Yes, it's really interesting, isn't it? She's just laying it on. And he's like, yeah, it is interesting, isn't it? 
I'm a big boy now. My loser daddy would be proud. You should value what you do, Frank. Obviously good at it. Like, this is like a horror movie right now. This idiot's like, well, I got my wife back. One who pretends like I'm amazing. All it took is throwing some furniture, baby trapping her and threatening the loony house. So after this whole, like, really creepy, perfect breakfast, he's like, well, I don't, I don't know if I've ever had a nicer breakfast. <laughs> yeah, because you finally got the woman you always wanted. Compliant, nice, strokes your ego, submits to your terrible leadership because men suck at leadership. Like, she's finally like, here I am. I give up. You know, honestly, this is when men should be worried. When there's all kinds of conflict and the woman tries and tries and tries and tries and then all of a sudden, everything's easy. You better watch out, buddy. You're getting served divorce papers if it's today, this current time. Or this is what's going to happen. You're going to walk out the door, think everything's okay, and then he's like, wait, but you don't like hate me, right? <laughs> like, she literally told you she hates you and meant it. You don't hate me, right? No, of course I don't. Like, have a good day. Okay then, so long, buddy. Look at her face as he's driving away. <laughs> this isn't funny. This is tragic. She's, there's a reason why this was an award. Um, I think she won a Golden Globe for this. or it was, She was at least nominated. The quiet desperation in this look. Right after having been like, how many of us have been at this point? I know I have. Being like this, and as soon as they turn their back, being like, if you're with an abuser, you get real good at that. Remind me to tell y'all of my Oscar winning performance, getting all my artwork back on my way out of town with my abusive. Like he stole all of it. Literally the most dramatic scene of my life. Anywho. So then she calls up, you know, the person taking care of the kids. Doesn't even have the heart to say goodbye to them. But she knows. I think she knows this is not going to end well. It's a very risky procedure. I mean, it's almost like she's dressing for her funeral right now. But, I mean, you should. This was so dangerous. But that's how much she hated that man. She would rather die than live this life. And honestly, I think that's, that's a noble choice. And, of course, it doesn't go well. This scene will live rent-free in my head forever. And then, of course, when Frank finds out, he's at the emergency room. And then um, this dude, who is obsessed with her, is like, take it easy, Frank. The same way he always told his wife not to cry. <laughs> Frank's like, she did it to herself. And then Frank's like, okay, let me go get a coffee so I can cry that I lost the love of my life who I literally don't know. These men will fall in love with a fantasy and then literally hate the wife that they fork every night and who could die bearing their children. It's just so funny. Like, I remember being, when seeing, you know, this is when he finds out she died. And I remember being so sad for him. Oh, look, he's running home to his kids who he hates. Now, the movie ends differently than the book. And like I said before, I have not read the book. And I have a lot of issues with Yates. And I'm going to go into that in a minute. Why I don't like that man. But again, full transparency, I have not read the book. But in the movie, you know, the next scene, they cut to the cheater and um, WandaVision. By the way, she's an amazing actress. I'm just calling her WandaVision just because she's literally playing that character in this movie. She's so good at doing this kind of character. Catherine Hahn is an amazing actress. She, I'm surprised that she's not considered, not more famous like Kate Winslet famous because she's so good. Anyway, so they're like talking about people who are like looking at the house of the Wheelers. They're like, Frank lives in the city now. You know, he's just devoted to those kids. Is that the same Frank that we know? Uh, that kid, that man, <laughs> I never saw him play with those children. While she's telling him this, is he's look at this man. He's just like, good, I miss that woman I didn't know, but I love that I forked in the car. Frank just spends every moment he has with those kids. Again. Is this the same Frank? So then they cut to like, later on, they're outside. He's like, I don't want to talk about the wheelers anymore. No, he doesn't say, it's because I get depressed thinking about that woman I love and I'm stuck with you forever. He's like, we don't have to talk about them. She has no idea why he's so upset. And like, fork you, dude. Fork you. I hate you. I hate you almost as much as Frank. You're like the nice guy version of Frank. We cut to Frank watching his kids play in a park. 
and blah, 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 which he wouldn't do. And the movie ends back with this woman, you know, smiling, you know, K Kathy Bates. She's just talking, talk, 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 talk. Her piece of crap, deadbeat husband. Her deadbeat husband is kind of listening. He's like, well, I thought you kind of liked the weed. He's like, well, they're a bit whimsical for my taste. A bit neurotic. Oh, could it be that they literally humiliated you? I <laughs> called your son a freak uh, last time. And she just keeps talking and he's like, God, I hate this book. He reaches into his pocket and turns his whatever that's called down so he doesn't have to listen to his wife he hates talk and talk and talk about stuff he doesn't care about. And that's the end of the movie. Et voila! All the men in this movie suck. And I know that the, this is a, supposed to be a movie about like mediocre. Well, well, let's talk about it. What did people say this movie's about? I mean, I looked up so many different kind of reviews of, of Yates and this book and this movie. And, you know, the, the, the book was about a talented couple, the bright, bright beautiful, talented couple. They assumed that their greatness was just uh, around the corner. And Richard Yates shows how Frank and April mortgage their spiritual birthright, betraying not only each other, but their best selves. What? How did, how did April participate in that? Uh, what I saw in the movie, and maybe the book is totally different, but uh, April was baby trapped and didn't have access to money and was in an abusive relationship with a complete king baby narcissist abuser. Who hated her guts because he knew he wasn't good enough for her. And he tortured her and lied to her and pretended to be something he wasn't. But I believe she was good, bound for greatness. She had ambition. She had all the tickets ready to go. She was selling the house. She was putting stuff in boxes. She was ready to go. She was ready to go. And the only thing that stopped her was this dead weight. They've been calling us a ball and chain for how long? As if they are the balls and chains. They are our ball and chain with baby trapping us and creating so much un endless labor, right? And then beating us down physically or emotionally and, and, and mentally. And yet she still almost escaped until she got knocked up. If she had not been knocked up, I believe she probably would have like run away to Paris. So she, that, mean, that means she would have had to leave her kid which, and then not have money. Like, I don't know. I don't know what she would have done. But the only thing that she betrayed by her of herself was marrying that bro. He is the reason why she did not live the life she wanted. Period. He, him, and the system of patriarchy, which and capitalism and white supremacy culture. That is the problem. Not her. Yeah, they're thinking they're so great. And then this this passage from the book is really fun. final scene. Shep realizes that you know. I mean, at least this woman's not dead. Looking at her now in the lamplight, this rumpled, foolish woman, he knew he had told the truth. Because, goddamn it, she's alive, wouldn't she? Walked over and touched her. She'd smile, wouldn't she? Hey, Matt, she would. When these people left the house, she would go in and bustle clumsily around the kitchen, kitchen washing dishes and talking a mile a minute. Like, the way that Yates writes these women, this man hated women. This man hated women. Let me tell you why. Despite all these men constantly writing about how he's just a genius. Nah. All these geniuses usually were terrible to women. Shocker. I would love to have seen more literature of women who actually had time to write. That's one reason why I, I care about this so much. As a writer and a creative, the only reason why I am able to do so, my creativity is so important to me is time. Because I haven't had a man burdening me with endless labor and derailing my career because they're jealous of me. No. I mean, I did. That one abuser derailed my whole career for a whole year. I wrote nothing because that man exhausted me. And Anthony, my husband, is the only person who's ever made my career better. Who isn't jealous of me. Who's proud of me and does all this stuff to support my career because he's not threatened by it. The Frank Wheelers of the world are why we don't have more women in the art. How do you have time to do this? When men exhaust you. Or they steal your stuff. Like so many male writers. They just steal from the women in their home. Literally steal her writing. I gotta make a video about that. So he was born in Yonker. His father was an electric light salesman. Shop, and his uh, mother was an aspiring unsuccess unsuccessful artist. His parents separated when he was four. His mom, he, called, he said, was an, uh, a good Republican. And his unstable to bigoted mother, Dookie. <laughs> 
supplied her son with with a childhood he characterized as his hysterical odyssey. It sounds like his mother, I don't know, also maybe she was a narcissist herself, but also um, was raising children by herself back then. Was short of money. Maybe because dad left? I don't know. Moved constantly and ended up abusing her son. Like, look at this. His mom forced her shy son to pose nude as a fawn for a series of ghastly statues, wore stained clothing when when Tipsy would sit her legs open so that her knickers could be seen. Okay, Yates insists that she wasn't that bad. But one horrendous account of Drinking Binge tells how she left a slick mouthful of puke on the pillow adjoining her son. Like, there's all kinds of, like, really messed up stuff happening between this mother who is, um, sounds abusive, but, you know, very inappropriate at, at, at best. Also, where's dad? Why isn't dad, like, like is, is he in his life? Doesn't sound like it. So she's a single mom. Lots of problems. Um, abusing her son, and it sounds like he never really dealt with that. Does that sound familiar? Uh, so many men who have father wounds and mother wounds and are in denial about their childhood, don't want to face it, don't want to look at it. And because, especially when men have, have mothers that they're so angry at, especially if they blame their mothers and or if they were treated bad by their mothers, but dad wasn't around because he left. Now, like... A couple different things happen, but these men who will not deal with this stuff, especially their mom stuff, if, especially if, like, who do you think is going to get that? Whoever that man marries, every woman he comes in contact with, his daughters, like, every other woman in his life is going to pay for him not facing that trauma. And what did he do? He drank himself to death. Like so many men do. Like a lot of people do. Because men are violent and have all the power, especially back then. And are terrifying and can baby trap us and do all this stuff when they don't deal with their trauma. Especially if they're born to parents who are not dealing with their trauma. And I know they didn't have resources back then. I know that they, like, we have so much more. But still, I'm saying, traumatized man hates women. Somehow, despite all this, uh, she was able to afford for him to go to a progressive but gruesomely competitive WASP prep school in New England. I don't know how she afforded this, but somehow... Which it made clear to him that he was the poorest pupil. Here we go. Now this is where that like, oh, I was bullied in school. My mom was abusive. Let me torture every woman in my life. And an ego this massive, think I'm the best, but really hate my... Men who hate themselves are the most dangerous people on the planet. Especially white men. Especially white men with a lot of money. Because then they have the power to torture literally everybody. Which is what the billionaires are doing. So because he was mercilessly bullied... I mean, I'm not saying this man didn't have a hard life, but... He just passed all that trauma on to any person who came in his path. And who comes in the path of men like this? Who rescues men like this, especially addicts? It's always women. And God forbid you married one of these men who were alcoholic. I think prohibition became so big. All these, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, actually. Oh, man, that's a whole other video. But one of the reasons is because all these women were stuck with these alcoholics who were literally draining their bank accounts and making their lives miserable. And they're like, maybe let's get rid of alcohol. <laughs> Didn't work drinking gasoline or like whatever i don't know what that then he goes to, to and then he's in the military oh let's radicalize them more let's make them even more abusive throw them into the military where where government daddy uncle sam is just going to be like boom, 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 right let's reinforce the hierarchy domination um uh, mindset even more because this man hated himself so much but wanted to be hemingway and all these other men never actually ended up making it even though he was a talented writer my dad was a really talented writer, but his writing sucked on some level because he didn't have any self-awareness. And he was a narcissist, diagnosed by a doctor. He was a very talented writer. I think I get my writing from him, but he didn't do any of the work. So his, the stuff he wrote, especially about himself, is like so cringe and, and, and just insulting. In fact, in one of his books that no one will ever read, he self-published that there's probably like no copies of it out there anyway. He bragged about all this crap. And then when he talked about my sister, he got details of his own daughter wrong in his own book. <laughs> I also spelled my, my, my middle name wrong until the day he died. And then I had to go through all kinds of stuff to get my passport and my immigration and all this stuff because my dad didn't know how to spell my name. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going here? Look, Yates married twice, unhappily and unsuccessfully fathered three daughters. Oh, great. 
Sorry, women. Sorry, ladies. I'm sure this was not fun, having a dad like this. Smoked and drank too much, and in between bouts of bronchitis and tuberculosis, which was caused a lot by his smoking, he began experiencing wild bo- bipolar swings that wrecked his later years. Constantly short of cash, he drifted into teaching and blah, blah, blah. Cremungeonly and attentive, he wrung a sense of what writing should be from his yellowing paperbacks, even as he trashed the writers of his own day while wheezing his lung-impaired way through cigarette after cigarette. This man was miserable, just like Frank. Frank is based on him. Always, it is clear he always thought he was a failure as a father, as a husband, and most, most, most serious of all, as a writer. Because, of course, he cares more about being a writer and approved of by other men than being a dad or a husband. Like, fork those bitches. At least 10 breakdowns are exhaustingly described in a book about him. Some are so horrifying they involve stripping off his clothes in the streets of LA. Staying, I'm like, the dude is miserable. Miserable. A dark genius. All these men now are like, I, I can't, there's so many men now who worship this man. Why? He sucked. He's a good writer. Do you know how many good writers there are? Come on. I mean, even when he describes the own, his own characters in his book, uh, you know, they're rushing around, trying to do their best, but they're doing what they can't help but doing, ultimately inevitably failing because they can't help being the people they are. No. A- that April can't do what she wants because of Frank. Because of men like you, Yates. People struggle with their own me- uh, mediocrity. Really? April seemed pretty cool to me. Yates was an anti-feminist, grandly patronizing women in the old style. And when he talks about his own, if my work has a theme, I suspect it is its simple one. That most human beings are inescapably alone and therein lies their tragedy. You know what? This is why I can't stand. Okay. I did a a video on this. I don't know if actually, I don't know if I ever put it on, on YouTube. I did it a while ago about the guy who wrote Lord of the Fly. That man was an alcohol, this, that man was a lot like Yates. And so his outlook on the world was that of a narcissistic, self-destructive, self-hating man who tries, because everything's through the vision of, of white men, right? Um, tries to explain the, the human condition. And he, he says that, you know, if you put a bunch of teenage boys on an island, they just ate each other. Do you know what? That story actually did happen in real life. And those boys did not each other, eat each other. They actually created a community and gardens and all kinds of amazing things. That this white man in, the, in, the, in England who went to a boys academy where all those boys are like griping each other and stuff. Like that's what they're known for is that those, those boys are tortured by each other. And they're white entitled privileged men with so much violence in them. And then they're self-destructive and they hate each other. And then they can't imagine a different world. So it's like this idea that humans are just sad and tragic. We get that from white men. That's where we get that. I don't believe that. But who writes all of our stories? Who writes all the stories? You know, I started to have so much more hope when I stopped reading white men's stories. Because they know nothing but domination. Unless they've done the hard work. They know nothing but exploitation and domination and mediocrity and self-hatred. And it comes out in their work. Somehow, Kate Winslet at least portrayed in her character a very strong woman trapped by an abusive man and a system set up to trap women. Even white, able-bodied, beautiful women like her who ha- who are the least trapped, still trapped by men. Like when someone explained him that knew him, he was this lonely soul teetering between the solitude he needed for work and the emptiness of the hours that followed, who really only felt comfortable when he was in the company of someone nearly as drunk as he was. Cool, bro. Yet, you know, I'm sure he never hung out with his kids. Probably hated his wife. No one wanted to be around this man because he sucked. Because he was another damaged, tortured soul and who never worked on himself. And again, I know they didn't have a lot of the stuff we have now. But there's plenty of people who've been through a lot of trauma throughout history who don't torture everyone in their lives. This man was so full of self-pity and a, and, and a raging alcoholic. And it sounds like all he did was burn all the bridges of everyone in his life. So in his later years, he was alone and hanging out in cafes because no one else wanted to talk to him. So these lonely old white men who hate themselves, I am so tired of them leading the world, making decisions for everybody, and even telling us how to think. Literally, Frank Wheeler wrote that book. These are the kind of men who make all the decisions in Hollywood, who greenlight books, who are in charge of the, the publication. Sure. 
They got some women doing some stuff. These are the gatekeepers. These are the men who are dating the world we live in. Especially, and most of them are in the United States because we have colonized the world through our media. So I don't know about you, but I'm done with these men writing our story and writing everyone's story. And rest in peace, April. You deserve better than Frank. You know what you thought of this video.